<clears throat> hey everyone, it's Joe Waxman, the mediocre astrologer. Meh, he's okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, today I have a guest, Lara, and we are going to be looking at Lara's chart. Uh, hi, Lara. Do you want do you want to introduce yourself? Say hi. Hi. Yes. Thank you. I live in Denmark. I'm an artist, and I've been sick a lot. And maybe Joe can see something. I don't know. I'm very excited and and grateful. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, this should this should be fun and interesting. So let's get um yeah uh, obviously hit the like button, subscribe, um share, and book a reading with me. Um, here's an example reading of what I do. Um, I'm, I try to be as helpful as possible and usually people say I am. So you'll get to see it in action. Um, macroastrology.com is my website. Macrogoldmachine at yahoo.com is my email. So reach out to me, get in touch with me. Book a reading. All right. So Laura... Uh, May 9th, 1980, 10.09 a.m. in Stans, Switzerland. Is that yes. all correct? Yes, perfect. All right. Are, are you familiar with your chart? Yes, a lot. I have studied in four years now. Okay. So you, you're quite, you're, uh, you're familiar with astrology. I am, but it's circular learning. So it's pretty scattered as my chart. All right, so you're a Leo rising, and I do know already um, from our brief interactions that you are an artist, so that's not surprising. Leo is very creative, uh, very big, bright energy, right? And Leo uh, obviously is ruled by the sun. So with the sun, we have, you know, when, when the sun's reflect, refracted, we get the rainbow of colors. So Leos are very bright, sunny, colorful, and often um, those colors, you know, that that's how they um it's sort of a connection to the arts and creativity also of course sun itself is is the um the uh i don't want to say creator of life but certainly there is no life on this planet without the sun so therefore that creation is it, that life-giving force is very creative so sun uh leo is very creative very proud um very confident Usually, uh, Leo ascendants are quite strong. It's quite a good ascendant, I would say. I mean, all the ascendants are good. This is there's so much, um, you know, boldness and confidence that comes with Leo rising. So, uh, very good for artists. A lot of artists have Leo rising, Leo suns, Leo combinations, right? Um, yes. It's also really good because your sun and ascendant lord are the same thing. So there's not going to be a conflict, right? So there's going to be more of a unification automatically with Leo ascendants because, you know, for some people, their sun could be in one area, then their ascendant Lord could be somewhere else. And, you know, they might not have any core, uh, good aspect and then they're conflicted in their life. So there's a focus, at least with the Leo, Leo rising. Yeah. Uh, you do have this Taurus stellium, which I mean makes a lot of a lot of artists have uh, quite a lot of Taurus, and I've included some um, minor uh, planets and asteroids, Sedna, uh, series, just just out of curiosity. I I, I thought I'd leave them in there. Um, I'm but, happy you did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, main mainly it's it's Sun and Mercury and Chiron as well as part of fortune in Taurus. And that's not surprising considering you're an artist. I mean, both Leo and Taurus are, are very creative. Taurus is more, I would say, um, beautiful and aesthetic, right? Real creativity is coming from Leo, uh, Pisces as well, which you also have Pisces moon, right? Pisces is, you know, the dream world, the fantasy, the subconscious, right? So a lot of creativity is coming from that. Right. But and then, you know, the the aesthetic beautification um, is uh, related to Taurus. Um, Taurus is very earthy and stubborn and grounded, obviously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And 
this is the 11th house. So, I mean, actually, it's moving. It's 10th house. So the sun is two degrees from the 11th cusp, right? But it's moving towards the 11th house. So 10th, 11th. Um, and sun conjunct Mercury with a mutual reception to Venus, right? Mercury is in Venus sign. Venus is in Mercury sign. It's not by degree, but it's still there. So words and pictures come together with this combination, right? Um, so do you also, are you also a writer or a poet? I, I have been writing a lot and I have been blogging and as a graphic designer, I have helped people out with their writings. Yeah. My sister's also an author. Nice. Yeah. You're a graphic designer, yeah? Yeah, former. Not now. Oh, formerly. Yeah. What are you doing now? I'm on disabled needs because of all the disease I've gone through. Okay. Uh, Chiron has been passing my MC a lot lately, <laughs> the last few years, and that has been very painful. Yeah, I wonder if it's Chiron or something else. We'll look at that. Yeah, maybe, maybe there's more. I mean, I think people have, I, I harp on this a lot, but people constantly blame Chiron for things that I'm not always sure it's Chiron related. Oh, okay. Um, but in any case, um, and then also words, you use words in your paintings, right? I'm kind of cheating a little bit because I saw some of your paintings. Yeah, and I love to do that. Uh, and I'm also a bit scared of it. Because I actually have the reverse. I have Sun in Gemini conjunct Venus in Gemini, and then um, and then Mercury in Taurus. But yeah, I did, I saw that, and I That's went to art school as well. So, and I did a lot with uh, pictures and words in combination. So I, okay. I know how that 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 goes. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, are you part of a a sort of creative artist community or or something like that? I would love to, but uh, since I have been isolating a lot, I haven't been able to take care of my uh, social network. Right. Um, do you do a lot of work online? I have done, yes. All right. And what, what sort of... Um... All right. So Venus is actually... So the 11th Lord's in the 12th house. So foreign foreign community right and you did move so you're born in switzerland but you moved to um to uh i'm sorry where are you denmark denmark right so mm -hmm. that is that does relate to that but you didn't become a part of sort of like an artist community or anything like that i have been before have i got been. sick before yeah. you got sick yeah okay yes. so that makes sense so because mm. 11th house and the 12th um yeah, it very much points to some sort of foreign cr creative community, artistic community. Yeah, so um, that's really interesting. One of the things about Chiron is, and I just made a video where it wasn't about this, but I did mention it. People with Chiron, conjunct Mercury, conjunct the sun, conjunct any personal planet, um, often feel... Um, a fear of uh, a very intimate fear of rejection because they feel different inside right mm, and it's yeah. not so much this this idea that you know chiron's a wounded healer it's pre pre wound well i'll tell you why because it's not automatic that chiron means wounds chiron what chiron means is something very different something very unique something very one of a kind and the people okay. who have it close to their personal planets feel that inside them and because they feel very different they don't want to be rejected maybe they had a subtle taste of that here and there and they're like well i better you know withdraw keep myself back keep myself hidden so i don't face rejection hmm. if there's bad aspects to chiron then there can be real rejection painful rejection and wounds from rejection right of course, if it's um, a planet like uh, Ascendant Lord or Ascendant or Sun, it can even show up in the face sometimes, especially in a harsh aspect. Um, but normally, it's really, it's just the in, an internal struggle most of the time where, where Chiron is involved, where the person is afraid of rejection, 
And so there's a lot of hiding. Yeah. And that's one of the challenges of Chiron is really embracing your uniqueness, your unique self, your difference, right? And I likened it to Saturn a bit because actually Chiron has an orbit that travels between Saturn and Uranus, whereas Saturn has a similar restriction, but it's it's a little different. Saturn is, is kind of just an image that I use, is a wall, a wall that we have to overcome where we are held back by our own fears and insecurities, especially initially, and some people for their whole life can be held back by Saturn because they never have the courage to overcome that, to climb over that wall. Um, but on the other side of that wall is leadership and authority and respect and um, endure long, Saturn elongates things, makes things last a long time and also mastery, right? And so a similar thing uh, can happen with Chiron where a person needs the courage to embrace their uniqueness, to embrace their difference. And if they do, great creativity can come out of that. I've seen it. a lot of creative people have prominent chirons, really strong chirons, because they can use that, that chironic energy in their arts, in their creative uh, field, whatever direction they take it in. And it can become um, really one of the strongest parts of their, their creative, their creativity. Uh, because they, they, they're they doing things that stand out from the crowd. And that's one of the things that anyone who becomes successful um, has at least some of, something that really separates them from the herd. Because everyone's trying to do something. Everyone's trying to make their mark on the world, right? And only the people who can really separate themselves from just being mundane, ordinary, will succeed. So Chiron is often a person's, can be a person's ticket to really, um, you know, excelling in their field. So okay. that's something to to be aware of, that you might yeah. want to be even more, like have the courage to be even more weird, more different, more unique. Right? <laughs> Brilliant. I would love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There are a lot of artists with very strong Chiron placements. Yeah. And they produce like very strange art, but it's it's what makes them unique, right? Um, film filmmakers too. I forget. I, I'm so terrible with names, but um, um. Anyway, I can't I can't remember the name right now. But a lot of filmmakers have a prominent Chiron as well, right? And then they do weird films, and it makes them completely unique. So right, okay. That's that's something to um. Because it's part of, you know, it's it's in Taurus, it's con conjunct your Mercury by one degree. Um, so don't be afraid to be different, to be unique, to be completely standing alone in what you do. Like nobody will ever be able to, uh, you know, reproduce or come close. I mean, they might copy you eventually, like if you're really, if you really embrace that, but, yeah. you know, it'll be completely unique. And that'll be a standout thing for you. I left Sedna in here because Sedna is a very far out uh, dwarf planet and it's in the Taurus stellium. So I thought it's relevant. And Sedna, I think, has a sort of spiritual quality. It's very subtle, very slow moving, um, way, way slower than Pluto, in fact. Um, and in fact, it just moved into Gemini recently. We can look at that. But um, Sedna has a, a quality that's um, spiritual. Right. So it's very ethereal, very far out there. So I'm not going to belabor that point, but I thought maybe it's relevant. Maybe you have, um, you know, a connection where with your with your art or even just with your with your sense of being that that lends itself to a very kind of profound but subtle sense of spirituality. I have that there's something spiritual uh, with me doing the paintings. Yeah, it's not it's not me doing them. Oh, very nice. Yeah, that's that's I like that because um, yeah, that's that sounds like that feels like um like a calling, you know, like when yeah. it's like beyond you, like when you're driven. That's sort of like what astrology is for me. Yeah, not sort of it is right. And then series I left here because series is kind of curious. There's a um, convoluted mythology behind it but 
I've often seen it in relation to food or agriculture. Um, I don't know if you have a connection to that. Uh, there's Indeed. also mother and mother and loss associations, at least mythologically with series. I have uh, two maternal figures uh, who are very sick and I have been taking care of um, people for 15 years and I have been studying food to get healthier and I am gro been growing my own garden and vegetables. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's also significant because part of fortune is here and part of fortune, um, it seems to indicate, you know, uh, it's not always direct. Sometimes you have to look at the aspects it makes, but it seems to indicate where a person, you know, can really excel at in this life. So Taurus things, obviously creativity, perhaps food as well, earth, earthiness, being uh, connected to nature, these sort of things, right? Arts, beauty, creativity, community. Um Okay, yeah. Perhaps even you might want to belong to a natural foods community. Yeah. I've tried that a few times, yeah. Yeah. Right on. Um, Your moon in Pisces doesn't have any real aspects to it, but it's in the eighth house. And, um, and it's probably good that it doesn't have any, I mean, because it doesn't have any negative aspects either. So you're probably quite psychic, right? I get a lot of synchronicities and then there's the stuff with my paintings, but not more than that. Okay. So at least intuitive, I would say. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, but maybe, the, maybe I'll, sorry, go on. The synchronicities are pretty extreme sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's like me asking for a blue and yellow tr truck and then 10 minutes after it, it will occur. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know what, I don't know what it means but I get that a lot. Yeah, probably a lot, all this earth is dampening the sort of, you know, if you had more backup, you would be more more psychic, but it's kind of standalone, this this moon in Pisces in the eighth house, you know, yeah. has some like cancer and you do have this Uranus and Scorpio, but it's not connecting here by degree, but anyway. Um, we do prog progressions? Yeah, I'll, I'll look, we'll look at progressions. Okay. Uh, breaking down the natal chart right now. Yeah, sorry. Um, Mercury, let's go back. Mercury is ruling the third and the twelfth. So twelfth house for creativity and foreign exotic things makes a lot of sense. Third house for writing. So writing should be a, a very important thing for you. Something to pursue and because it's not only in a very prominent house, the 10th house, it's conjunct the sun. And things that are conjunct the sun are things that we can illuminate, right? And that we can gain recognition for, right? So you can you can have success with writing, right? Or working with your hands, which is also arts, you know, painting, it's working with your hands, uh, writing, communicating, uh, expression. So definitely, yeah, the arts and creativity for sure, but also the writing could re be really something um useful for you i left eris here because it's conjuncture mc I and know. Eris, it's exactly conjuncture mc yes I, so eris is also known as discordia or strife uh mythologically eris is a very slow moving planet it's a goddess of war unlike mars where it's the god of war and mars is obviously a, a major planet that's um you know, one of the personal planets. Eris is not a personal planet. It's a dwarf planet that's, I believe it's outside of Pluto. So it is very slow moving. Um, and Eris is not um, outright aggressive like Mars. Eris is a troublemaker. So that's that's kind of Eris's, Eris's uh, whole, whole thing. It's, she likes to throw wrenches in, in the works and she's kind of like, you know, has fun and she's like this, you know, a very kind of clever trickster, right? Um, so I thought perhaps that would be something may maybe that would show up in in your in your work, in your career, in your public image. Do you feel like something of a you know heiress type trickster playing games, things like that? 
I've been using it a lot when I have been um, rebelling against poisoning our foods, pesticides and such. Yeah. And I, I once wrote an article that became viral oh. and I got a lot of anger towards me at that time. And I was being really cheeky and yeah, it was tough on my psyche <laughs> to do that. So it's it's kind of like working against me. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're a troublemaker, it works. You know who had Eris conjunct the Ascendant? And I, I should be paying more attention to like all the, because I look at so many charts, but I often exclude a lot of the asteroids and dwarf planets. But I know one, Joan Rivers had it exactly conjunct her Ascendant, Eris, right? Okay. And she was a troublemaker. And yeah, that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. it's it's good just keep it there <laughs> but she was great she's hilarious and funny and fun and um you know it's it, eris is certainly a, an interesting one um but yeah you can have fun with that um also because it's in aries and it stays in aries for so long it might be quite different when it moves into taurus but um it's so slow i'm not sure when it'll move into taurus Anyway, it's an no. area. Yeah. Um, I think I think the North Node is conjuncted right now, isn't it? Yeah, and then they, you know what? And then I did a post about that and how they named this new COVID variant Eris. So I'm like, no, oh, that's interesting. These guys are they're, they're enacting they're enacting um, Eris because they're they're troublemakers. They're causing trouble. They're naming yeah. their their made up, you know, COVID variant. I think it, they're they're. I think it's all. I don't want to get too deep into it, but they're playing games and they are astrologers up, up at the top. They're astrologers. You know that what they say, millionaires don't use astrology. Billionaires do, but billionaires are the ones pulling all the levers. They're the puppet masters. They're controlling everything. And they're the ones who probably get to name, you know, these new imaginary COVID variants, whatever. So they're having fun. They're being jokesters and tricksters and they think they're fooling people, but I'm onto them. So. <laughs> so where do you have Aries? Where do I have Aries? In the sixth house. In the sixth house. Okay. Yeah. It's not very prominent for me. Um, but uh, any case. Okay. I'm a Gemini, so I'm naturally a trickster. Gemini is always trickster. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> um all right. So you have Jupiter conjunct Mars in Virgo. So barring your 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 sickness, um, Jupiter conjunct Mars is very physical a lot of times because Jupiter is expanding Mars' uh, physical activity and aggression. And in Virgo, it's very health-minded. So would you say, maybe not right now, but that you are very, that you like to be physically active? Yes, I have ADHD with big H. Today I have been swimming and cycling. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, indeed. Yeah, I'm very sort of health conscious. Mm -hmm. um, but still but still eating too much. So it's it's there's something wrong with me balancing balancing I can't speak now. Help me out. Balancing uh, food and movements and yeah. Well, because also this is the second house, so it deals with consumption. Mm. It's what comes out of your mouth and what goes in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, it's after I've been medicated and um, there has been problems with my blood sugar levels and it has been horrible. I'm starting to get back on my normal health state again, but it's it's a slow progression. Jupiter in the second house generally is quite good for finances. Um, have you been well financially taken care of? Or is no. it or or because it's not in great dignity? I think it's because it's not in great dignity, and maybe also because of the sign conjunction with Saturn, because I have lived below the poverty line in Denmark, and I'm privileged living here, but um I have less than most people here. I'm the typical poor artist. Interesting. I think you can change that. Yeah. I don't think it has to be that way. 
I would love that. See why it is. Um, Yeah, and Saturn is in the second whole sign house and in the same sign as Jupiter. But again, Saturn does not make it so that you cannot have money. Saturn is just, like I said, it's that wall where obviously this is, um, yeah, second whole sign house, but third quadrant, you see here. Um, But like I said, Saturn produces a lot of fear and restriction, right? And if it's if we're talking about the second house, Saturn, then it's about self-worth, right? And your own self-image. And yeah. Saturn, and then Jupiter, obviously not in good dignity in Virgo. Um, there could mm-hmm. be issues yeah. of low self-esteem. Exactly. That's a huge problem. Yeah. And yeah. that's that's something that you can overcome. It's not like a a static thing. Oh, I have Saturn in the second whole sign house. Therefore, I will never have money and I will never feel like I'm in anything worthwhile or anything like that. You know, you you have to do the work to overcome it. Right. And it's not easy, but everyone has a Saturn somewhere and everyone has to overcome those fears and the the negative conditioning that comes with Saturn or a Jupiter that, you know, or or like Jupiter here. yeah. One thing, though, that's good is that even if Jupiter is not in good dignity in Virgo, it's good for Virgo things. So things that relate to Virgo are writing, analyzing, you know, being analytical, logical, uh, health minded. Mm-hmm. Um, hyper hyper details, crazy hyper details. <laughs> what in your in your artwork? Everywhere. Yeah. Everything yeah. I do. Yeah. Well, the second house is also very ornamental, right? Because it relates to our appearances, our outward appearances, like the makeup, the hair, the clothes, you know, and Virgo is going to be very conservative. So I don't imagine you're going to be uh, very showy in the way you like to appear, but it's very important to you nonetheless to, to have everything perfect. You want to appear as perfect as possible. You want your, your artwork to be perfect, right? Yeah. Especially Detailed, that. Yeah. ornamental but exact right mm-hmm. yeah also appearance because because of one of my diseases one of my eyelids keeps sw- swelling so i look really stupid sometimes and that bothers me a lot and Careful. maybe uh, huh you have to be you have to be mindful of of how you talk about yourself yeah because the self talk is is our own our uh the the repetition of our own mental conditioning. So if you say you look stupid, probably nobody else would say that except you. So no, you're the only no. one who's yeah. saying you look stupid. So yeah, and I wouldn't say that to anybody else. So of course I should stop saying things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So you, this one I'm saying, you have to with this second house issues. You have to be mindful of your self talk. You have to be mindful of your conditioning. And you have to push back against it, right? If you catch yourself saying, I look stupid, like stop yourself and saying, no, I I don't. Let me rephrase that. Let me use a better word, right? Yeah, I'm working on it. Every time I'm I'm sick, I'm saying, okay, honey, tomorrow it might be better and it's not your fault and it's okay. It will be better. And sometimes... I just feel it's a big lie and it will ne- never get better. I'm going to die tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, you have to you have to just keep working with it because also your Saturn's retrograde. Yeah. Like I said, even though it's in the third cusp, it's still influencing Jupiter and Mars and your mm-hmm. second whole sign house, your second quadrant. So the retrograde is more resistant. It's not going to want to, it's going to be more negative and not wanting to change retrogrades don't like change they, they don't want to move forward right they want to regress return go back so you have to work with yourself a bit more consciously a bit more proactively to get your self-worth your self-esteem up to par and look you have plenty of time to do it you're still young you know <laughs> thank you you are i mean you're younger than me so that's young you know and um any time is good enough. Like you can be 80 and still change, right? You know, of so course. yes, of course. Yeah. So you have to be very positive. And, you know, for you, it might be good to to work with some other people to really help you to um, 
uh, challenge some of the negative conditionings around yourself because Virgo is critical, right? Especially a Saturn Virgo retrograde, you know, it's going to be very harsh on, you're going to be very hard on yourself. And it's, I am. Yeah. Um, third house. So it's relating to your intellect, you know, but also influencing the second house self-worth and Jupiter is not in great dignity here. Um, but that's okay. And with the most malefic of sect also, and then it's not even in its own, it's not on the day part of the chart. Mm. So it's yeah. like three times badness in that house. Yes, you studied classical astrology. Very good. No, and no, I I studied everything. So there's nothing. There's no structure to it. I yeah. still, I'm I'm using astrology to to heal myself because psychology yeah. has just brought me so far, and now it's like astrology is giving me the rest. I hope so. You know, um, Mars is the MC Lord, and it's conjunct Jupiter, so that does indicate. Um, success in a career that's related to second house Virgo things. So, you know, this can be very much relating to like graphic design, painting, arts, things like that. Um, also teaching. Do you teach? I have been a writing teacher. Yeah. Riding horses, not not writing. Oh. Horses, horseback riding. Oh, interesting. Teacher. Yeah, very physical, the Mars. Yeah, yeah. It could be writing as well because Virgo. Yeah, I'm too big for horses now. I want to. I don't want to put my weight on a horse right now. I, I meant write writing. No writing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> writing. I, yeah, I love writing. But Jupiter's the natural teacher, right? And Virgo is very academic, analytic, right? So, and second house is voice speaking, teaching, right? So. Yeah, I was thinking about creating a podcast about my healing journey, but I just thought it might be too boring to, to listen to. But maybe I should just do it for my own sake and not for the listeners. Take a risk. What have you got to lose? You, you yeah, just, exactly. You, you, you're going to learn whether it's something that, you know, you can do or not do. But you probably have to do it a number of times, you know, before you get a really good idea. And then your Saturn might be like, no, it's not for me. I'm not good at it. But then yeah. revisit, it, revisit it once once those doubts settle, you have to go yeah. back, you know, so you're going to have to try things a few times, actually, before you can really resolve it in yourself to say that's not for me. Um, It took me a while to become very confident, confident enough in my YouTube channel, like really a number of years before I was like, OK, I can do this because i have a lot of retrogrades as well especially on the first second and well 12th first and second yeah okay but you're very fluent in it, it, it well because i natural. i've done so many videos you know i've done over th it's like 300 um closer to 400 by now i guess okay uh, and i'm a gemini but it, the, the confidence was not there initially i had to keep doing it and doing it and doing it right um and what about the confidence now is it good now much much better right yeah okay. but still yeah. like it'll be a few more years before i'm like i don't know whatever like completely con like there's always the residue you know there's always like some residual doubts yeah um mm -hmm. jupiter is ruling your sixth house so i'm not surprised about health issues right and it's also ruling your ninth cusp. Um, so I would guess probably you're not religious. No. no. I was agnostic before I did astrology. I was very critical of it. <laughs> so it's crazy sitting here now and believing it so hard as I do. But spiritual, yes, right? Now, yes, but not four years ago, I wasn't spiritual. It came to me because of a few experiences. It's also Jupiter's at zero degrees Virgo, so that's significant. Um, zero degrees planets 
are have a ver very pure energy of that that sign. Uh, it's, so it's even more concentrated. So obviously, again, not not great for Jupiter to be in Virgo, but for Virgo, um, for teaching Virgo things. So that's really that's it is quite good for that. Right. So really being perfect, really being exact, really being analytical, teaching about these things. It's crazy because I was studying as a teacher before I got sick. I, I stopped doing graphic design and then I started to study as a teacher. And then yeah. huh? go, on. go on. No. And then anxiety came and I didn't really come back into business. You can go back to it. You can be a good teacher. Yeah, maybe. So that's one of the benefits of getting a reading is that I'm validating for you, not only you, your subconscious, what you can and can't do, because it's not only me who is somewhat of an authority, maybe not a, maybe not the biggest authority in the world yet, but somewhat of an authority, plus your chart, which is also an authority. And then I'm telling you, you can do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Jupiter is the teacher. Jupiter yeah. is the planet of teacher. Second house is the planet of speaking. Right? Mars is your MC Lord. So you can teach about Virgo things. Plainly. There's no question about that. Right? Planets and poor dignity are not great for everything, but they are good for what the sign is. Right? Virgo. So you can teach about Virgo things, which could include art, uh, writing, um, academics, or uh, whatever you studied. So I would I would say like graphic design, art, or writing, those three things, unless you study something else that I don't know about. I study astrology now. You study Would astrology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So at some point you could teach astrology. You could probably teach astrology anyway to, you know, people who are real beginners. I'm not good enough yet. No. Well, just stick to what you're really good at then. What you're really confident, which is art, graphic design, and writing, right? Um, yeah, because Jupiter's tied to your Mars, which is to your career, right? And then Saturn also is authority, right? And that's also on conjunct the third cusp in Virgo. So you just have to overcome your fear. So you have to take action. The way to overcome your fear is, first of all, um, watch your mind, watch your thoughts. Don't allow your mind to delve into negativity. <clears throat> Whenever you do, change change your thought. Like, uh, be uh, gratitude, be grateful, you know, remind yourself of what you're grateful for and what where your talents are. Um, you can refer back to things I've said or whatever. Just don't allow yourself to dive into the negative and you have to keep making efforts. It's a bit like lifting weights, right? You have to push. I think I do that a lot with Jupiter Mars conjunction. I'm I'm kind of gung ho, you know. I, I keep doing stuff that keep actually hurting me because I work too hard. So Okay. I well, really I really try it a lot, if you can see that. Yeah, well, yeah, Mars Mars is excellent for that. So instead yeah. of pushing your body too hard, push your um, mind to yeah. against the negativity. Yeah, yeah. Take a risk. And if it's yeah. scary, that's good. That means you're growing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'll try that more. Yeah, yeah. Because you have Saturn and Virgo, and then you have more, uh, Mercury conjunct Chiron. So definitely there's some issues with... Yeah, the, the fear, the insecurity, doubt. You also Definitely. have Pluto and Libra retrograde in the fourth cusp, which is in conjunct the sun. So um, how is, how's your father? Uh, I don't have, uh, I don't speak with him anymore. Was he abusive? No, he was, um, he was an... He was a person that was very happy-go-lucky, but also very self-absorbed. So uh, I think I was about six years old when he left me, forgot about me for the first time. So I, as an adult, I visited, I, I lived by him in Switzerland uh, for 
eight months when I was a teenager. And at that time, I just decided he's not really a father. And I got back to Denmark uh, and he's not a, he, he's not really a father. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that. No, it's okay. <laughs> I learned to live without him. Pluto retrograde is also difficult. It's good. It means a very independent spirit. Right? I am very independent. Yeah. Yeah. But it's difficult to work with because especially with negative aspects, it can really leave painful marks on our, our the deepest parts of ourself, right? As you know, related to your son, related to your father, related to your upbringing, um, you know, relationship, Pluto and Libra, retrograde. Um, yeah, it hasn't been easy. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. So have you... Do you, do you, did you do a lot of work to heal those wounds? I'm working on a, something in psychology called codependency. I've been treated by a psychiatrist for codependency, uh, and I'm still working on it. You know, not to please, not to um, to work hard to to feel love. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that sometimes I think about this uh, Queen Kongs from Pluto to my son, which is pretty precise. Um, it feels like there's always some strong persons trying to pull me down because they are envious of my naivety and my light and my, I'm also very happy-go-lucky. And sometimes it feels like people feel threatened by that. The, you know, the, the naive, playful Leo, uh, sometimes I, I get the shine without even wanting it and people are getting envious of me especially females actually I don't know why because I I have really good girlfriends but it it hasn't been easy with the girls in my life with the women yeah well Libra I guess maybe do you think Libra would be that because it's masculine. Oh, Libra's ruled by Venus. I mean, the sign itself has, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just. I mean, you said girlfriends and the Libra's relationships. Um, it's fourth house and it is roots. So, I mean, I can see that, you know, and just in general, regardless of if it's guys or girls. Um, yeah, because your ascendant lord is sun. It's very high, along with Mercury, mm -hmm. right? You know, obviously the other planets, Chiron, uh, Sedna. But, I mean, that tells me that, I mean, that's a good position, generally speaking. I mean, it's a little more 11th house, the sun, because it's so close to the 11th cusp. Um, but it's actually the, the 10th whole sign house. Yeah, so and also equal sign, which I use. But yeah. I could see it in the 11th also. So it's lovely to to have a porphyry reading. I never had that. Well, I use, I, I, I look at both. I don't, I'm not, um, you know, some people are like, oh, it's one degree from the Placidus cusp. Therefore, it's. Yeah, no, it works like, in both houses. Yeah. It's, it's, real life is not, you know, that linear. No. You know, real life is messy and. um the shades of gray right everything is there's no differentiation there's no real delineation between day and night uh summer and fall and, and winter and spring and you know we make these arbitrary markers but that's not reality that's just for convenience yeah and these cusps are sort of the same so that's why i say like you know i always say like conjunct the cusp but in the, in the which whole sign house so it's tenfold anyway it's very prominent so, yeah, your nature is to ascend, to become, um, you know, public More, and the best. Like Donald Trump. It's lo it looks like Donald Trump, Charles. <laughs> well, he has his son, yeah, very clearly in the 10th. <laughs> Gemini, yeah. With yeah. North Node and Uranus. So that's, and it's a full moon and an eclipse. So Donald Trump has a very unique chart. Right? Yeah, he has. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I was just trying to. <laughs> but yeah no your you, your nature is to ascend right to to do things really well and to become 
like, yeah, you have so much insecurity and so much things that are holding you back, but you could actually become quite successful. You know, really your, your own negative conditioning is holding your back, your, your childhood abuse, your trauma, you know, your inability to overcome your fears, but you're working on it, but you still have some work to do, right? Yeah, a lot. But you can do, you can, you can, you can, um, you know, you can do good things. You can have good success because I, I looked at your art and you are good. Right. Thank you. And you can be even better once you really fully heal. I think so. I, I would hope so. Yeah. And also uh, AI is giving so, so many new opportunities for artists. So I'm really excited about stepping into that realm and learning about this interesting mid, yeah mid journey and and playing around with that well, that's your south can... node. yeah your south node's in aquarius and we're about to have you know pluto well it's gonna until 2025 it's gonna go back and forth but yeah 2025 is when pluto moves into aquarius fully and then that, that should be really good but but yeah there's a whole lot of ai stuff i use it for my thumbnails ai images yeah i i I thought I saw it. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then of course you have your North node in, in Leo, which is great for arts as well. It's in conjunct the second cusp. Um, so in fact, Leo is ruling your second house cusp, at least according to, you know, Porphyry, but, um, and that's in Taurus. That's in this, you know, 10th whole sign. We already know that. Um, but yeah, that's also excellent for the arts. And then you have um, this Uranus opposition to uh, series and part of fortune with Uranus in the fifth retrograde in Scorpio, which again, that could be an issue. Did, were, did you have some issues in your school days of some sort of trauma? <laughs> yes, I was bullied during all time all the all the years and in fact i was running off in the forest and uh, i hide with the horses and and i ended up smoking a lot of weed and i didn't come to school and then they throw me out before the exam so yes yeah it's also square the nodes there's this big old square here with this yeah uh, but you know what like all like everything and you have, you know, you have these four planets retrograde. Um, and retrogrades are more difficult to deal with because they don't like to change. They're very stubborn retrogrades. Mm -hmm. And I have it too. Um, yeah. The inverse is also true. Uranus can often represent trauma, especially with negative aspects, uh, especially in Scorpio. But as much as the wound is, let's say the wound is really a deep wound. When you heal it, you can rise that much as you were hurt right? You can rise above it and become that much greater, right? Sounds so that's good. Yeah. Uranus represents awakening as well. So we're as deep as the wound is, the awakening can be that great as well. The awareness, the brilliance, right? The genius, the inventiveness, the independent thinking, that's all Uranian. Yeah, I feel that. I feel it slowly getting more healthy i'm i'm getting my language back uh, in the beginning of my years with anxiety i lost i lost my language i was stuttering i i couldn't perform in front of other people even just speaking to people was a performance for me i still struggling with it when it's uh, sudden and I, i'm not prepared and sometimes i just need not to be prepared so it's really complex to be around other people I had that issue too. I had terrible anxiety. Terrible. Oh, okay. I couldn't speak in front of people. Like, and every time, like, I, I was so annoyed. Like, every time, like, you know, when I was in school, it was always like, let's go around and introduce ourselves. And I hated that. I was just like, uh, you know, because every time it got to me, I would just be like, my heart would beat a mile a minute. And I'd be like, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> oh, no. I'm sorry um, to hear that. Yeah, because I, I had childhood trauma um but i did a lot of work on it and um look at me now <laughs> yeah you're doing really good um but yeah i i've worked a lot on it and that's 
that was one of the my motivations for you know starting the YouTube. But um, so I can completely relate, and it's also in Scorpio, right? And Scorpio, it's it's pretty severe in Scorpio because Scorpio relates to that death, death and rebirth quality, but it's pretty strong in Scorpio as well, you know. So that that's good, and. In the fifth house, I think it was it's excellent for art as well. You know this, um, it's gonna it can produce some very dramatic results for you. I love dramatic, yeah, yeah, because it's it's gonna be like quite shocking and strong, and you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I love that because I have it natally. I have it on the ascendant, right? so, on the ascendant. Yeah, Uranus rising. So that's Scorpio. pretty good for an astrologer. Exactly. It's good for an astrologer and also for you for astrology, for understanding astrology. It's also square the nodes. So it's something that you really have to pay attention to, right? Yeah. Something that you really have to work at and develop and because um, it's not going to leave you alone, right? There's going to be a thorn in your side until you until you really, really, not even until, it's always going to be there. It's always going to, because it's square the nodes. So it's always going to be something that you're going to have to deal with and work on and develop develop can i so, tell can is there time time enough that i can tell you about my uranus transit now we'll get to the transits but i mean is it relevant uh, go ahead yeah it's because uranus has uh, left me with um a little bit of color blindness on my left eye uh, since it has been transiting my son and if you're reading in Chris Brennan's book about the sun, it's a, I think it was a porphyry talking about on females, it would be left eye. And I, I can't remember who said it, but Uranus transiting the sun could leave you with troubles with your eyesight. And I'm having that now. That's so crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's interesting. Um, and was that a recent development? It has been going on since uh, Uranus transited my son the first time, and now it's over it. Uh, but it has been, it's close to it again now. Interesting. And, yeah, and it the disease is kind of following the hits, so it's pretty crazy. It started in my ear, and then it progressed up to my eye. And it's not completely colorblind, but it's like getting a cool, cooling filter on it. So that's just crazy. Interesting. Um, I I was I was born a little bit colorblind. Interestingly, <gasps> okay. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And I went to art school, and my art teachers would remark about my colors. They're like, like I would never put those colors together. I'm like, really? <laughs> it took me a while to figure out. I'm a little bit colorblind. Not like completely, but a little bit red green colorblind. And your son was in Gemini. My son's in Gemini. Yeah. So what's the connection with the sun and Uranus? I don't know. No. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, well, I was born that way, so it's not due to a transit. I mean, you have Uranus rising, so maybe that's why. I don't know. Anyway. Okay. I just thought that was interesting. Sorry. I'm leading you in different no, directions. I have a Gemini Venus. I can do that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's okay. It's okay. Okay. And you, you. you got the, the Virgo, so you're, you're apologizing, So, but no need. Okay. You also have Neptune retrograde. Neptune retrograde, especially Neptune and Sag, that's quite good, especially for an artist, because now you're becoming, um, now your vision, your artistic creativity is more unique, more different, right? More unconventional with the with the Neptune retrograde. I just square this Saturn. Uh Now, Neptune with, with, with Saturn can tend to, it's actually probably good for an artist, maybe not, not necessarily the square, but if you work through the square, um, because Saturn is very solidifying and Neptune is very creative, so then you can you can bring your sort of imagination into reality with the Neptune-Saturn uh, uh, connection. However, the square is probably going to bring out some some negative qualities of each especially initially um it might be more difficult to be realistic um yeah especially yeah. with the third cusp 
having troubles with that yeah um but it's conjunct you know it's conjunct the sixth it's in the fifth fifth quadrant but sixth cusp so it's good for art i would say working out working out uh being an artist on a daily basis generally speaking i would say um Do you have trouble focusing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said ADD, right? A ADHD. Big ADHD. H. ADHD. Yeah. yeah. That that I guess that that would relate to that, especially being on the third cusp in Virgo. Um. Might make you yeah hard to focus, quite dreamy, stuff like that. But um, uh, with with um, with some effort and practice, I think it's probably good for art. I think I can really hyper focus on my painting. So with that, there's no problem. It's with everything else. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I think it's okay. Um, overall, um, Saturn's also trying the sun and the part of fortune. Um, and that's that's okay. That's not bad, especially. If, you know, it's conjunct the third cusp. So that's relating to your ability to, to focus as far as like, you know, painting, drawing, things like that. That's that's quite good. Yeah. I always thought that the only positive thing about my chat was the mutual reception. So maybe I should ask you about yours one day. Yeah, well, I have two mutual receptions, one with the moon and one with uh, Venus. The okay. Venus one is not as strong because it's not by degree, but the one with the moon is quite good because my moon's in Virgo, uh, Mercury's in Taurus. So oh, what degree? I, I, um, 19 and 25. So it's not exact, but it's still pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's look here. Uh, your Venus is out of bounds. I know. So that's probably quite good for art. Makes it more, <laughs> you know, unique, original, extreme. Uranian. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's slow. So that's mm -hmm. also good. It could be more... It, pers hmm? it, it's not slow enough to be considered uh, in... No. Not no. station, no. No, not yet. We can look, see... see um. Actually, I think Mars it was slower than Mars is slower than Venus. Oh no, is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. And Jupiter's slow too. So let's check those out. Oh. And then um, obviously Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto retrograde. So you're very independent, very unconventional. Really like to think for yourself. Very Don't stubborn. Huh? Very, very stubborn yeah yeah of course with the taurus yes retrogrades um let's check here mars so mars is not that slow 33 days from station yeah i think venus was 15 days from stationing so i thought that was my slowest planet but maybe not oh 15 days uh, yeah 15 days mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, still good. All right. It looks beautiful on the sky when it's at that very moment. I'm sure it does. Yeah. What about your mother? I didn't ask about your mother. Is she sort of missing as well? Uh, no. Um, there's something about disease and, and missing that could there could be a connection to that but i i don't want to tell this in public okay no worries it it, it hurts too much All so, right. but she's there and we have a very tight connection and she's very spiritual yeah much more than i am yeah well moon in pisces yeah 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 eighth house um and there's no negative aspects so that's quite good yeah all right we can look at 
Um, look at your secondary progressions. All right. So sun is at zero degrees cancer. Oh, yeah, so that that's what I wanted to tell you when I asked about progressions, because that means I have some water connection to the moon and maybe more spirituality now. Yes. And Mercury's in cancer. So, mm. yeah, you could really start to tap into your psychic, spiritual abilities, connection. Yeah. Uh, you'll definitely become more emotional. My son, which has moved out of cancer, moved into Leo. I'm quite oh. happy about that because yeah, I'm tired nice. of being emotional. <laughs> yeah, I will be emotional the rest of my life now. Well, 30 years. You can, you can live much longer than 30 years. Let's see. <laughs> for 30 years anyway. Okay. Um, but that will be good for creativity as well because 12th house, you know, really tapping into your subconscious, right? Yeah, I'm glad you're saying something positive about that. It's not positive. It's all positive. You just have it's all perspective. But it's sun in the twelfth. So? So? What's wrong? You don't with... think I'm going to be disappearing into thin air? Um no, not literally. Not literally. It's it's <laughs> only your progressed sun. And yeah. um no, there's nothing wrong with 12th house. Plenty of successful people have 12th house. The thing about the 12th house is that it's the subconscious mind. So therefore, whatever you believe about it is true. Oh, I should start believing something else now. You have yeah. to master your mind, not become yeah. a victim of it. Right? Yeah, you're right. You're spot on. Yeah. Uh, people believe all kinds of negative stuff about the 12th house because it's like a it's like a downward spiral. Right. If they don't if they're not if they're not mastering their own mind, then it starts to become negative. And they're like, oh, you don't know what it's like to have 12th house planets. You know, everything, all of astrology, so much of astrology is like victim minded. But it's not just astrology. It's people in general. have. It's very easy to be very victim minded. And everyone thinks it's all outside, external. And, you know, this transit, that thing, that whatever. It's like everyone's helpless. Everyone's a victim. It's like. Okay, well, if you believe that, that's true. But if you understand that you're creating your own reality, you can turn it around. There's nothing yeah. wrong with the 12th house. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with the 8th house, right? Uh, yes, we, there are some things that might happen with 8th house, Pluto, Scorpio, 12th house, Neptune, right? Pisces. But it's all your perception of it. And I'm a, I'm a good example. I'm a perfect example. When I was 10, my brother was hit by a train and killed, right? And I'm it took sorry me to, hear that. to overcome that. But like I said, the, the bigger the wound, the bigger you grow from it, it once it's healed. So it's just perspective, right? And the 12th house is nothing but there's so many successful people with 12th house planets. So it's not bad at all. And for you as an artist, it's good. Right? And you can become more spiritual and creative. Mm. Yeah. And deeply, you know, sensitive, emotional, emotional sensitivity. And for, you know, as a woman, that's, you know, very naturally easy. Cancer is very feminine sign. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so Venus has retrograded. Mm -hmm. Still in Gemini. Um, MC is in Taurus. Um north node let's see here um jupiter ascendant conjunct the ascendant yeah i grow fat when that happened <laughs> i grew fat sorry okay. yeah that's just funny it's just funny when it's so literal but i know i should victimize myself it's i think maybe my virgo pisces axis uh, are working hard too hard on me being a victim but it's just still funny <laughs> virgo can be very very critical you know towards yeah 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 and others and everything um then your mars is conjunct saturn yeah also mm -hmm. uh so you, you said you push yourself hard which is a mars saturn thing um, with the brakes on it feels like with the brakes on with the brakes on? That yeah, pushing myself hard and then having the brakes on. 
Yeah, because it's a difficult combination. On the one hand, Mars is exalted in Saturn sign of Capricorn, but Saturn is um, in uh, debilitated in Mars sign of Aries. So oh yeah, that's true. So it's good for Mars, bad for Saturn. Saturn drives Mars, makes Mars very focused, which is your career and your your fifth house. So it's probably good for, I mean, very good for pushing yourself. But then the Saturn is difficult. Saturn can um, get sort of worn out and stiff and hard and aggressive and dictatorial. Um, it's a it's a hard combination, Mars. And, I have it natally. I have my ascendant Lord Mars and then Saturn, both in Leo. Um, so, oh, you know okay. what that's like. but um, you can use it to to be a bit more physically active. Not 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 in a way that's going to hurt yourself. Be careful of physical, you know, actual physical like uh, hurt. But you know, just stay physically active. Um, on a regular yeah. basis that's that's why i started with the swimming yeah yeah because i needed to be careful with this body i, I keep wounding myself well that's what mars and saturn can it can cause injuries to to um to to structures to bones joints you know mars pushes saturn too hard and saturn becomes brittle and hard <laughs> yeah um yeah yeah moon is moon is in libra and it's conjuncting it's it's coming up to pluto let's see when that is i'm trying to sell my house now so it's on my ic that's pretty interesting i predicted myself to sell it uh, maybe uh, october or maybe in the beginning next year but the moon down there was a part of it so around march 2024 is when it'll be conjunct and so issues around your mother will come up around that time we have already the issues because of her disease well they'll, they'll come to a head around that time oh okay so it might get worse and then then they'll then it'll you know be past it'll come it'll you know get better yeah. um or at least moon will move on from that into scorpio well <laughs> <laughs> uh. something to look forward to no um yeah i have my moon in the eighth i, I might be used to this don't you think so that we can actually be a bit prepared for I that energy. Can, I don't think you're used to it because the moon is okay in the eighth without bad aspects. Oh, okay. So yeah. A bit more different. Pluto planets are stronger than signs. Planets are more concentrated than signs. So if your moon is conjunct Pluto, different than moon in the eighth. Yes, of course. Yeah. Progress moon we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I see that. Um, but that's your progressions. Um, let's look at your solar return. Oh, one second. So that was May, May 9th, 2023, this year. So relatively yeah. new. Um, Oh, hold on. I like to combine it with uh, perfections, yearly perfections. So Pisces, Jupiter. Do you know about yearly perfections? Yeah. So just for anyone watching who doesn't know, we yearly perfections is a predictive technique that um, it, it moves one whole sign house per year. You start in the first year, like when you're born, it's in the first whole sign house. Then you turn one, it moves to the second whole sign house. So that would be Virgo and so on. Each year it moves to a different whole sign house. And and you look to the Lord of that year for um, uh, to see the themes play out. And then you combine it with solar return to get even a bigger picture, a more accurate uh, picture so you are in um 
Pisces, so ninth house with Jupiter, natal Jupiter is at zero degrees Virgo. Um, but Jupiter is the Lord of the year this year, and it's in Aries in for in your at your birthday on your birthday, solar return. Okay, so that's 10th house. So a prominent year for uh career. But Jupiter is also ruling the sixth house. So as well, so they're you know health issues could be um paramount um you also have the node mercury and then and then uranus conjunct the sun where where the sun is the ascendant lord as well as the sun exact mm -hmm. right? so i would expect health to be um very much an issue this year because uranus shakes things up and you're especially mm -hmm. Uranus and Taurus, right? And if it's conjunct the ascendant lord exact like that, that's not a great combination, right? Nerve issues could be, um, yeah, it's I have in, inflamed nerves in my jaw, so that's pretty precise. That's what's creating the eyesight problems that's inflamed nerves and Jupiter in Aries, so the head inflamed. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, crazy. Um, but it's Uranus is very radical, and it could sh change things. It can shake things up. I mean, besides health, this could be a year of transformation. A it year of is. I, I'm selling my house after 13 years of living here. So that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, and I, I lost both of my grandparents with dementia. I have been taking care of them for 15 years. So oh. I'm having freedom for the first time in many years. And it's, it's a, it's a sorrow with freedom. So it's a kind of, it's beautiful sorrow because there was a lot of suffering. And so I think Uranus brought me a lot this especially this year well saturn is in the eighth in pisces so saturn can represent old people mm. grandparents parents bosses authorities but yeah saturn in pisces in the eighth can represent loss loss of grandparents loss of older people yeah and neptune's in pisces in the ninth quadrant conjunct part of fortune exact so you know good year for um i mean neptune and pisces is very i mean creative spiritual um intuitive um you know especially in the ninth house it definitely uh points to spirituality right intuition spirituality art yeah creativity yeah i i I have this deep urge to paint so i would really love to have more time to paint again and then venus as well as mars are both in cancer in the 12th um venus and in, in cancer in the 12th that's very creative um mars and cancer is not very good no um dignity but it can be intuitive, Mars and Cancer. It can be creative. Um, and it can also represent loss. So career-wise, this might be a slow year. Uh, but good for good for creativity. Like you might not have a very active public career type thing going on this year. But um, when I mean, you have a lot of activity here as well, though. So it's mixed, right? Yeah, it's it's growing on me. The thought of the podcast and how I, I would approach it and also how I'm going to paint with AI because it's a new world now. I, I have been able to create amazing artworks, artwork without AI, but now there's AI. I'm thinking about whole new ways of doing the paintings and I think maybe that's what you are seeing here. Yeah. Well, also Pluto was in Aquarius at that time at zero degrees. Right. So that's going to be powerful and probably has you thinking about, you know, 
uh, creating with, with, with AI. I mean, Pluto's creative as well because it rules the death and birth cycle and birth is nothing but creativity. So, yeah. uh, and Aquarius relates to AI. Yeah. Moon's, in, Cap be. Moon's in Capricorn in the sixth. So that's really good for getting down to business, working hard. Not great for expression, but, you know, just get getting down to, to work and, and being, you know, pushing yourself a little bit. Um, Moon and Capricorn can be good for that, especially in the sixth house. I have been um, decluttering my house for two years. Uh, maybe that's a bit like that, the moon in the sixth and all my Virgo stuff. I don't know. I was just thinking about, you know, all the public stuff in the tent and taking pictures of the house and suddenly I'm public again after I have been hiding for many years. So maybe there's a connection there. Yeah, well, Jupiter and Aries in the 10th, certainly in the North Node. Yeah. Interesting. The uh, solar return ascendant is exactly opposite. So that's on the descendant. Uranus, Sun, Natal, Sun, ascendant, all 18 degrees. So that's that's interesting. Um, yeah. Did you have any relationship sort of upsets with your? Yeah, I I came out as a polyamorous. <laughs> so maybe that's the thing. I did that this year, not publicly, but you know, uh, I have I had a flirt this spring, and I just needed to say that I I'm not into monogamous lifestyle okay. anymore. So maybe that's that certainly what qualifies with Uranus on the descendant, you know. <laughs> it does. That's crazy. I haven't thought of that. Also, yeah, the no, eighteen it's... degrees. I've heard a lot of astrologers talking about the eighteen degrees. It was it last year or this year? I don't remember. I don't maybe get was... too much into the degrees. I look at it like if it's at zero degrees, it's the beginning of a sign. If it's at twenty nine, it's the anoretic. If it's at fifteen or somewhere around there, it's the middle. But yeah. I, the exact degrees, I'm not sure. I yeah. haven't seen it work, so I'd have to be convinced that, it, that it's relevant. I'm skeptical, yeah. and I think that's a good thing. I don't that's just buy good. into everything, every woo-woo thing that astrologers come up with, because there's so that's much. That's your Virgo moon, or what? It's my Virgo moon. It's my Saturn in, in Leo in the ninth quadrant, tenth whole sign house. Yeah. Um. So, yeah. My that's good. My also is, you know yeah of course very grounded and practical um yeah so what else mc jupiter mars um yeah it looks like you know a good good career good year for painting and, and stuff like that creativity and um right so do you have any questions um, I'm really impressed that you could read all this because I know my, my chart is really all over the place. So I'm very impressed that you actually you could put something together and it was very precise. And I could ask you tons of, of questions, but I don't want to bore your listeners. Yeah, I don't want to. Um, you know, if this were a private reading, I would indulge you probably for a bit longer. But um I mean, if you have any pertinent questions, that's fine. Uh, but otherwise, I have. I, yeah, go ahead. Do you have? Do you use Juno, the asteroid? Um, I don't normally use it, but it, I I do know that it was conjunct your ascendant, because here's why. Juno, people say, oh, it's marriage and stuff like that. I haven't seen it work. I feel what like does, this means mean? I'm... like Juno conjuncted. That means you're going to get married. So many people get married. Like, what are you, what are you, you're a bride? I mean, like how it, it doesn't even make sense. Like it, I, all I can say is that it's a body. It's an asteroid in the sky and it's conjunct your ascendant. I don't buy that it relates to marriage. Yeah, because I, 
I have always said that I didn't want to get married. Always. Exactly. But now I feel like I want to, I'm, I'm the person marrying myself and that's perfect with Juno and Liu. But also I've heard that <laughs> that Juno is uh, someone who fights for females, the weaker females. Or I, I think maybe I could find some inspiration with Aries on my descendant and Juno on my ascendant. Something about maybe helping women that has been in the same situation as me, maybe with ADHD. I don't know. Not I'm not sure yet. What I could say, what I would say, is that you have an asteroid on your ascendant. And it's emphasizing your ascendant, uh, your personal sense of self more. So there's a there's a, a sort of greater, um, there's a unique quality that you have. Um, it's emphasizing, you know, you. It, but I don't, so I don't put much, I don't know. I don't know okay. is the bottom line. I don't okay. know. And I haven't seen it work as far as the mythology. I think the asteroids, we have to be a bit more skeptical about them, a bit more testing and not 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 so quick to believe because people automatically they're just like all the time they're like, oh, I just found about this asteroid. What does it mean? It means it's an asteroid. That's all it means. I mean, like, yeah, we could maybe find some, you know, potential meaning there, but what it really means is it's an asteroid. Yeah. Fine. Yeah, I, I'm not sure I know what she means, but I, I see that she works because when right now I just had my Juno return and at the same time I was in contact with an astrologer that was actually studying Juno. Uh, that that was a bit crazy because I didn't thought of talking about Juno and she wasn't either. Uh, and also when I found out about the asteroids and Juno, I think it, she was on my son uh, in my 10th or 11th house. So I I feel like there is some sort of meaning to it, but I'm well, not sure what. Yeah, I mean, you you would probably know more than me because you're you're experiencing it on your ascendant. So you have a very close relationship with Juno. Yeah, maybe I have, yeah. So... So you use you use asteroids if they have a personal meaning to the Sometimes. native. I've seen yeah. I've seen Eris work. Uh, I've seen some significance to Sedna, some significance to Ceres. Um, Vesta, I'm not really con that convinced about about what it means. Uh, maybe, you know, I'm I'm sure it means something. Um, Pallas Athena, I've close to my Mercury, so I like I like the story because. It relates to um because my Mercury's on Algol, so it relates to that story. Oh. Like Hermes and 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 Pallas Athena, you know, give Perseus the, the 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 sword and the the reflective shield to defeat Medusa. So I like to think, oh, I have some special ability to overcome like uh, temptation. And yeah, Medusa, that's something to overcome. That's pretty crazy. Well, you know, I'm not an alcoholic or a drug addict. So, you know, and I could have been because I was traumatized. So maybe I was defeated Medusa. Uh, but, you know, I've seen Al I've seen Al Gol, uh be, be quite destructive with some people, but uh, very empowering to other people. You know, Perseus eventually cuts her head off and defeats a demon with with Medusa's head. So it can be used in a very positive way. So anyway. Wow. Impressive. Interesting. Yeah, I'm. I'm very happy you allowed me to get on your show. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you for coming. Thank you for uh, being a part of it. And um, you know, like I said, like uh, you can really do a lot more. Um, once you once you heal, once you overcome the your your own personal limitations, and it's all an inside battle. It's all an inside. All your enemies are internal, right? I know. I know. You back, but you. Yeah, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Well, um, very nice to meet you, and and thanks for coming on once again. Um, and and that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit the like button, subscribe, book a reading with me, and you know I will do my best to help you with astrology and everything I know.
uh, macroastrology.com. My website, macrogoldmachine at yahoo.com is my email. And that's it. Mediocre Astrologer signing off. Man, he's okay. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.